Hey everyone, welcome to this video series on the most frequently asked test automation interview questions in investment banks or top IT companies. This is the part one on the series of videos which we are going to publish on our channel QA script. So don't forget to subscribe to the channel if you don't want to miss out on any particular video. Now, if you're preparing for a test automation interview in a top investment bank or a IT company, this is the best place to prepare yourself for the questions which will be asked to you and what are the best possible ways to answer these questions. We'll go through some of the very frequently asked Java interview questions. We'll also look at some of the automation framework related questions and we'll also look at some of the programming questions which are asked in these interviews. So let's have a look at what are the questions which we'll be discussing in this particular video. So the first question which we'll be discussing is what is the final keyword in Java? And can we apply it to class and methods? The next question which we'll be looking at is what is static keyword in Java and why it is used? The third question is what is an interface and when do we use it? The fourth question, what is an abstract class and why we use it? And the last question in the Java part would be write a Java program to filter out duplicate values in a list. So next we'll look at some of the framework related questions. So we'll start off by what is an automation framework? Explain the different features of your automation framework. How do you handle different test environments within your automation framework? Write a sample code. What are the different design patterns in Java? Give an example of a design pattern used in your automation framework. And how have you implemented abstraction in your automation framework? So these are some of the questions which we'll be looking on the automation framework side. So let's look at our first Java question, which is what is the final keyword in Java and can we apply it to class and methods? So coming to the answer, final keyword is nothing but it is a non-access modifier used for classes, attributes and methods. So it can be used for both classes as well as methods. Okay. Now, even though this covers both the parts of the question, you may get another question on top of this like why should we use a final keyword or what will happen if i use a final keyword for class or a method right so for that you need to explain what will happen if we declare a variable as final so its value cannot be changed which means it will become a constant variable okay similarly for a class when it is declared final, it cannot be inherited by another class. So the inheritance concept also comes into the picture. Then for a method, when it is declared final, it cannot be overridden by another method in a derived class, right? So this is how you can answer this question. Now let's look at our answer for the second question, which is what is static keyword in Java? and why it is used. Now similar to final keyword, this is also a non-access modifier and it can be used with blocks, variables, methods, and nested classes. It is shared across all instances of the class rather than the object of the class. And the biggest advantage of using static keyword is when you declare a method as static, then it can be called without creating the object of the class. So we can directly call that method if it is declared static. Coming to why it is used, static keyword is mainly used for memory management. And static variables get memory only once in the class area and that is when it is loaded. So that is how Java saves memory when you declare a variable as static because even if the variables are getting called again and again, the memory is only allocated once, right? So that is how you answer this question, which is what is static keyword in Java and why it is used. 
Now let's look at our next question, which is what is an interface and when do we use it? So an interface is an abstract type which is used to specify a behavior that all the classes must implement. And the primary reason behind using interfaces is to achieve complete abstraction. So abstraction is one of the major concepts in OOPS, which is used by Java and interfaces help us to achieve this OOPS concepts, which is abstraction in our Java programs. Interfaces also contain different abstract methods. So all the methods are abstract by nature in an interface and they have no implementation. You cannot have non abstract methods in an interface. Also, interfaces can be used to achieve multiple inheritance in Java. So inheritance is again a OOPS concept and we cannot implement multiple inheritance with Java classes, but it is possible with interfaces. And that is one of the advantages why we use an interface. Also, variables in interface are final, static and public by default. Now, why public? Because if you declare it private, the classes which are going to implement an interface would not be able to access these variables. Also, interfaces cannot be instantiated, which means you cannot create an object of a particular interface. So these are all the different points which you can mention in an interview when you are asked what is an interface and why or when do you use it. Now, along with interface, abstract class is another topic which comes very often in automation interviews. So let's look at how we can answer this question, which is what is an abstract class and why do we use it? So abstract class is also one form of abstraction in Java, but it doesn't provide you with full abstraction, right? And the reason behind that is abstract class can have both abstract and non abstract methods. Like an interface, it cannot be instantiated. And abstract class can have constructors as well as static methods. Okay. So uh, while you are implementing an interface, you need to use the keyword implements. But when you are trying to extend an abstract class, you need to use extends. And why it is used or when do we use an abstract class? So it is used when we want to share code among several closely related classes, right? So you can basically think of abstract class as a structure which can be put in place and then that can act as a framework for all the other classes, right? Also, abstract class doesn't support multiple inheritance, right? So classes don't provide you with multiple inheritance. You can only do it with interfaces in Java. So both these questions are very important for your automation interviews. And you also need to kind of prepare what are the differences between abstract class and an interface because that is one of the favorite questions, right? So we have already seen uh, many differences which are present in abstract class and interface. So try to uh, gather all of these points when you are trying to answer any of the questions related to abstract class or uh, interface. Now, next question is a programming question. And here you will be asked to write a Java program to filter out duplicate values in a list, right? Now there are several ways of writing this program, right? So you can use, um, you can iterate through all the items in your error list and then you can compare each item uh, with the other and try to find out which one is the duplicate one. But that will consume a lot of time and also you have to write a lot of code in order to perform this operation, right? So you need to think of an efficient way of writing your Java code, right? You need to think of the space and time complexity whenever you're trying to write a Java code. Okay. So the best way uh, to kind of write this Java program is to use a collection, right? And in that you have to use the hash set collection because hash set collection doesn't allow any duplicates by default. So even if you try to insert any duplicate elements into a hash set, it will not allow. 
okay so what we need to do is we need to add all the values from a list into the hash set and the hash set will take care of all the duplicates so it will filter out all the duplicate values automatically so that is the approach which you need to take whenever you are trying to write a java program to filter out duplicates values in a list okay now coming to the actual code right so this is how it will look like so whenever you are trying to attempt um, a code or a particular program in your interviews don't worry about uh, the syntax right uh, interviewers they generally don't care about the syntax you need to um, explain them the logic right so the basic structure or the basic algorithm you need to um, show them uh, that in an interview and not the actual syntax of the code okay so uh, here basically i am creating a array list and then i am adding few values right as you can see uh, java and python are duplicates here right after i create an array list here i am declaring a hash set right so it's of set type so remove duplicates is my hash set and then i'm just basically using the add all method to add the values list into this hash set right so once i do that it will automatically filter out all the different duplicates which are present in this list and then to print it out i'm just using a for each loop okay so it's very simple as you can see uh, you just need to remember that you need to use a hash set collection whenever you are trying to filter out duplicates okay uh, the output of this program will look something like this it will print out um, all the unique values which are present in the list and it will not include the duplicates so a perfect example of how you can write a program to filter out duplicate values in a list with minimum code right now coming to the next set of questions which are related to automation framework and automation framework is obviously very important when it comes to any automation interview right so let's look at our first question which is what is an automation framework right so you need to explain uh, what consists of an automation framework what are its benefits why do we use it right so framework basically it is a set of rules or best practices which can be followed in order to deliver consistent results within a team right so if there are different team members uh, working on the same automation code then it's better to have a framework with a set of rules which everyone can then adhere to in order to uh, bring out similar results right so by definition automation framework is a collection of tools and practices that are designed to make the testing process more efficient okay and these tools can be any any automation tool like selenium uft or uh, or any other automation tool and practices are basically how you manage all the different things within the framework through which uh, you can make the whole testing process more easy and simple so when we are talking about the guidelines what are these guidelines right now this could be a whole list of things but uh, some of the important things are um, uh, coding standards right how do you write your code uh, are you following the best standards or practices then um, how do you handle your test data okay so are you using any kind of external data sources how are you handling these different um, uh, data sources then um, how do you handle your object repositories so in a tool like um, qtp or uft or renorex object repositories are already inbuilt but when you are using uh, open source tools like selenium you don't have an object repository so how are you handling that within your framework uh, how are you handling different application configurations because you will have a lot of configurations like um, uh, related to your applications related to your framework so how are you handling them um, where are you storing them right so all of these things uh, should be included uh, in the automation framework guidelines also um, how are you generating your test results where are you storing them um, how are you accessing external resources how are you managing your dependencies 
So there are lots and lots of uh, things which are included in automation framework and you need to think of all of these different things and um, all of this should be included in your automation framework guidelines. Now coming to advantages of automation framework, uh, it obviously helps increase speed and efficiency. It brings down your maintenance costs, right? Because once the framework is ready, you don't need to make a lot of changes everywhere. You just need to make changes wherever it is required, okay? It improves uh, test accuracy because uh, now the testing is performed by uh, machines and not humans. And so uh, there are less chances of um, making errors, right? Uh, it also lowers uh, risks, right? So you don't have any kind of risk uh, related to your scripts or related to your process or related to your resources, okay? Um, it maximizes test coverage. Now that is because um, there are areas of application which you might not have tested because of lack of resources. But now since you have automation framework in place, you can now um, cover as much functionality as, as possible, right? You can also cover a lot of test data, uh, which you may not have covered when you are doing it manually because of time constraints. But since now your execution is much faster and you have lots of resources in place, um, you can go ahead and test all of the functionality or all of the uh, test data coverage, right? Uh, also, um, the most biggest advantage of an automation framework, it increases the reusability of code, right? So a single automation framework can be reused across different applications or different teams um, and hence it increases the reusability of every code we write within a framework. Now coming to our next question on the automation framework is explain the different features of your automation framework. Now there is no specific answer for this question because it depends on which automation framework you're working on or which one you have developed. So you need to answer based on that. But for this session, I'm just going to tell you an example from my own experience, right? So these are the features uh, which will be present in my automation framework. So it is built on Selenium WebDriver API with Cucumber and Java. We have used a BDD framework to write our feature files using the Gherkin language, which increases collaboration across the team, no matter if they are developers, uh, business stakeholders, or the QA team members. We have used the page object model to maintain our test objects across different page classes, which increases code reusability and makes it easier to maintain. We have used Maven as our build tool in order to build and maintain all our project dependencies and plugins. We have also used a number of different reusable functions for common operations and application specific functionalities. Then uh, we have also used external data sources like Excel database uh, to store our test data. We have used different reporting plugins and custom libraries to generate extensive reports in various formats like HTML, XML, JSON, and Excel. We have used standard naming conventions to write our classes, functions, or variable names. We have also provided detailed comments and documentation for each class and function in our framework. So this is how um, you could answer this particular question. I have listed down um, all the different features which can uh, exist in a particular framework, right? So this is just an example. There could be more points which you want to include um, while answering this question, but uh, I'm just giving an idea on how you can answer this particular question. Now coming to our next question, which is how do you handle different test environments within your automation framework? Can you write some sample code, right? Now this is a very frequent question whenever uh, they are asking about an automation framework, right? So if there are multiple test environments on which you want to execute your automation scripts, how do you handle that within your framework? Do you change it manually every time? or do you use some kind of mechanism through which it is easier to change those values and not going through the scripts and changing the values again and again, right? 
So for this, uh, what you can say is uh, we store all the environment related configurations in a properties file and then using the Java properties class and it method we can retrieve all the different values from these properties files and then whenever we, we have to change uh, any particular value for a particular environment we can go ahead and change in the properties file uh, there are no changes required uh, in the remaining code right so this is how uh, you can answer this particular question and then coming to how you can write a sample code for this right so first uh, you need to mention that um, there could be several properties files right related to your application uh, one properties file may be related to your framework and one uh, which will be specific to your user right where uh, you will store all your confidential data right user password or any other connection strings right uh, but let's say for example there is an application dot properties file and we have defined these two properties okay so dev dot url and staging dot url so these are two environments uh, one is a dev environment one is a staging environment and then um, the dev URL is this and the staging URL is this, right? Now, if I want to use um, these two properties values in my scripts, right? So how do I do that? So we have to use the properties class and the code for that will look something like this, okay? So don't worry about um, how do you declare a class or a main method, right? So as I said, um, the format is not or the syntax is not important but the actual logic is more important okay so in order to access this properties file first we'll create a file instance right and inside this we'll pass the path of the application.properties file okay so this is the path source resources application.properties and we are creating a new file object here okay now inside the try catch block because uh, all these different methods are going to throw different kind of exceptions like file not found exception or IO exception. So it should be covered uh, in try catch blocks. Okay. Now inside the try block, we need to create a file input stream object in order to read this particular file, right? So this is a properties file and we'll be using the file input stream in order to read this particular file or access this particular file. Okay. So once we do that, uh, we can create a properties uh, instance right from the properties class and we can use that instance to load our file input stream right so once you load this particular file input stream using the properties instance you can access all the different keys and values which are present in the properties file okay so now uh, you can go ahead and extract the individual keys and values from that particular properties file right so in order to get the value of dev.url, we can use the get property method from the properties instance, right? So once we do that, we can get the value and store it in a string. Similarly, we can do it for staging URL and we can either print it down or we can go ahead and use these values anywhere in our scripts, right? So this is how um, you can write a sample code in order to demonstrate how you can use the properties class and its methods to uh, maintain all the different environment configurations within the automation framework. Now coming to the next question, which is what are the different design patterns in Java and give an example of a design pattern used in your automation framework. Now, if you are applying for a senior automation position, this is one question which you might get because uh, if you are working on automation framework, you must have used a design pattern, right? So let's see how you can answer this particular question. Now there are different types of design patterns which are present in Java. I have listed down some of the design patterns here, like the factory pattern, singleton, prototype, and the builder pattern. But uh, I think one of the patterns which is most popular and most simplest to use in Java is the singleton pattern and for this particular question uh, you can very well uh, go ahead and say that I have used singleton pattern in my automation framework they might ask you how you have used this particular pattern in your framework um, so can you explain that so for that you can see uh, we have used the singleton design pattern to initialize the browser driver right 
and this is to make sure that only one driver instance exists at all times even if uh, this instance is being called a number of times in my script um, the singleton pattern will make sure that uh, only one browser driver instance is created at one time so that my scripts are not uh, affected by multiple browser instances right so this is how uh, you can answer this particular question as i said there are a number of design patterns and you may have used a different design pattern in your framework and you can construct your answer based on that now coming to the singleton uh, pattern which is present in java and how does a singleton class looks like so it basically contains a private constructor and a static method that has written type object of the singleton class right so this way it makes sure that um, an object of that particular singleton class cannot be created anywhere else right you can only call that static method in order to get access to the object of this singleton class right so if you want to have a look at how the singleton class looks like because you might be um, asked in the interview like can you write a sample code for a singleton class it's a very common question uh, in automation interviews right so this is how a singleton class looks like now there are uh, different variations of it but um, i have used one of them right so as you can see it contains a private constructor which is the singleton class and i have declared a variable here a static variable which is also private right and uh, it is of type singleton class right and i have created a variable instance here and i have defined it as null okay now i have also got a get instance method here which is public static right and it is of type singleton class again so here i am checking if instance is null then only create a new instance of the class right and then it will return the instance if it is not null which means the instance already exists then it will not create a new instance so this is how singleton uh, design pattern works right um, it will check it will continuously check whether an instance exists if it exists then only it will create a new instance if it already exists it will not create a, another instance of your class right so uh, similar design patterns can be implemented in automation framework uh, one example as i already said is the browser instance right so when we want to have a single browser instance we can go ahead and use the singleton design pattern now coming to our final question of this particular session is how have you implemented abstraction in your automation framework abstraction as you know is one of the popular java ops concepts and the interviewer is looking for how you have implemented this in your automation framework now one of the ways to answer this particular question is we have implemented abstraction using the page object model right it is also a design pattern but it is for automation frameworks and in the last question we looked at a design pattern for java okay and we have implemented this using different reusable methods and classes okay also you can say we have defined all our page objects and their methods inside different page classes and all of these page classes are constructed based on the different pages of the application or on different functionalities of the application in this way the actual tests are completely abstracted from their implementation as they only contain calls to different methods which are present in our page object classes so this is how we can implement abstraction in our automation framework right so as i said this is one way of um, answering this question there are, there could be other ways you can implement abstraction in your automation framework depending on which automation framework you are working on but uh, for my example um, i'm talking about a selenium framework where a page object model will contain all the different uh, page elements and their methods inside the classes which can also act as an object repository for a selenium automation framework right so these are some of the important concepts which you need to remember when you are going for an automation interview um, 
especially uh, when you are going for a selenium or automation interview related to java you need to uh, understand all the java ops concepts as they are pretty important and all the questions will be revolving around these concepts and also related to your framework so these were all the questions uh, which i had in this particular session uh, do look out for uh, more questions in our coming up sessions if you like this particular session on the automation interviews questions and answers do hit the subscribe and like button as i said earlier we'll be coming up with more such questions and answers to help you crack your interviews in top investment banks and it companies so keep watching our channel and see you soon